So there's, there's good news for those of us that like computers. Um, according to Craig Mundy, who is the, I don't need you, me, I don't need to tell the TechCrunch audience this, the Chief Research and Strategy Officer at Microsoft, um, we are becoming more like computers, or perhaps computers are becoming more like us. Craig says that uh, the computing interface is evolving from something we drive to something that's more like us. Craig, welcome to TechCrunch TV. Great, thanks, thanks for having me. Whoop. Is this the first time you've been on TechCrunch TV? Yeah, I think it is, actually. Well, relax and have fun. No problem. What do you mean by that quote, Craig? Well, I mean, for the last 20-odd years, the primary way people have had to deal with computers is you had to train yourself to work the way the computer knew how to work. So you would point and click and touch and type, uh, and the what we call the graphical interface was the, your, your vehicle. Uh, but that forces two things. It lowers the semantic level of the interaction, and it forces you to work in the way the, comfort, uh, the, the computer works. Now the computers are powerful enough that we're going to make the computer more like us. And with that, it, many, many more people will be able to get value out of computing, uh, and the level of engagement between you and your computer will go up. When you say that you're going to make, or we are going to make the computer more like us, does it mean it's we're going to make computers that are more emotional, more rational, more intimate, no, more, first, more effective? First, we're just going to make them more sensing. Sensing meaning? In the sense to emulate the human senses. So sight, <coughs> uh, the ability to hear, the ability to speak. Uh, so these things that are the principal senses that humans use beyond the traditional touch kind of things as a way to interact, that's what we're going to give the computer now. How profound a change, a revolution, is that? I think it's very profound, actually. Uh, one, because there's so many people who don't get really that much value out of the computers that are in their lives. And, of course, last week the planet crossed the 7 billion people mark, but only about 2 billion out of that 7 billion are actually getting much access or use of computers at all. And part of the reason is it's too hard for them to use them. So by making the computers you know, less of a tool and more of a helper, and getting that help through a natural uh, interaction model that's more like dealing with another person, I think virtually the other five billion people also begin to become uh, uh, people who can use this technology. Will we continue to call this thing a computer? No, I almost think we're sort of in many ways past that point already. There still will be certain sets of things that we call computers. But most of the computers in your life today, you don't address as computer. You know, your, your phone, you don't call a computer, you still call it a phone. Really, it's just a computer that has an app to make phone calls. But, you know, we're, we're in that transition. As somebody said here this morning, a car is just a big rolling computing platform these days. Uh, television's gone that way. You know, gaming consoles are that way. Uh, so I think that most of the computers in your life won't be called computers when everything is a computer, then also nothing is a computer. Well, I'm not sure what you mean by that. You know, when, when I think about that evolution, I think that what's really happening is people will care less about the any one device as, as the, the place where they go to get computing done. What they care about is that computing is essentially integral to their life and work, and that they can access it or consume it you know, in, in any of a variety of convenient places. So it's, it's getting to be a bit more like you know, electricity, where you, know, you, you want it, you just go look for the outlet. And I think what's happening now is you're, you know, when you want computing support for something, you'll look for a whole variety of outlets where you get it. And, and this will be in, in all manner of devices. Craig, Microsoft was, of course, the dominant company in what we might call the computer age. Um, as we evolve or change into, I don't know, what, whatever you want to call it, the post-computer, what you're describing, how confident, how confident can you be that Microsoft will remain the central player in this new world? I, I think we're in pretty good shape, to be honest. You know, there's many, many competitive aspects of this very large world we just described. Uh, but I think another thing that was mentioned here at the Techonomy Conference this morning was, 
you know, sort of people awakening to that like everything is about software. And you know, first and foremost, Microsoft isn't a computer company. It's not even a PC company. I went there in 1992 to do non-PC software. And so here we are almost 20 years later, the world is sort of awakening to the importance of putting software in almost everything. And so I think, you know, as, with that as our heritage, and in, 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 I'll say an increasing awareness of the importance of software, I think that Microsoft will be in very good stead, you know, in the years ahead. And there's obviously lots of competition, but, but you know, I'm, I'm fairly confident that, that we'll be a major player. You have one of the best titles and the best jobs, I think, in the world, the Chief Strategy Officer of Microsoft. What do you spend your time thinking about? Well, you know, my strategic responsibilities are really in the technology domain. So, you know, I don't plan the strategy for every one of the business groups, but, but because I oversee research, which is where we look the farthest into the future, you know, we try to pick the right technology strategy for the company. And from that, we derive our products and competitive positions over a long period of time. And I think, you know, Bill did that in the, in the years that he was at the company, and I've inherited that role from him over the last five years. And, and so my focus is to try to pick the right uh, long-term strategic technology directions. So you're implying then that there is an intimate relationship between strategy and research at Microsoft? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think, you know, you, you have to be informed uh, in, a, in a very broad uh, array of, of concepts uh, in order to be able to sort of apply your intuition to what you think will be important. And so Microsoft Research is just a tremendous asset. I mean, it is the world's largest computer science research operation. And as a result, the, the breadth of that activity informs me on a continuing basis about what we think is possible and, and will be important. And uh, it's a tremendous asset for the company. Craig, as you know better than I do, Microsoft has a lot of critics. Last night at the conference, uh, Mark Benioff suggested that Microsoft was yesterday's news. What stories would you like TechCrunch listeners or, or viewers to understand about Microsoft, to show them that you're the future rather than the past? Well, I think it comes back to this question that, you know, it's all going to be about the software. And, you know, the software is going to manifest itself in a whole variety of ways. Some will be in service components, some will be in, in the, the, the devices and the underpinnings of, of all the devices in our lives. Uh, some will be the tools that, that build these incredible platforms. And you know, Microsoft is the company that's probably done the most of that in the most you know, uh, broad array of, of products over time. I think we're entering a time period where there have been sort of a lot of individual, I'll call them preliminary heats, sort of getting ready for the big race. Uh, so the big race hasn't started yet? I don't think it has, uh, and, and I'll tell you what, why. Uh, to me, it, or, or you could say it's a bit like you know, warming up for the decathlon, all right? You have to be pretty good at each of the individual, you know, sports mm. uh, in order to, to ultimately run the decathlon. And, and so I think there's a lot of investment Microsoft has made to, to be competitive today, even taken one at a time, in every one of the major categories. So, I mean, you know, to go down the list, I mean, servers, cloud services, uh, personal computers and their evolution, tablets, phones, cars, game consoles, televisions, we're in every one of those. There's not another company, particularly one that has software as its heritage, that's in all those categories. And yet I think that's sort of going to become the decathlon of computing in that people don't want those things to be completely disjoint. You know, they don't want to have to tend, you know, to each one of the devices one at a time. And yet over the last 10 years, your, your viewers would certainly acknowledge that you know, that job has been theirs. And so I think you know, one of the, the, the interesting opportunities now is to try to figure out how do you make sense right. of these somewhat separate evolu evolutionary paths. And I think Microsoft is the only company that has invested over this almost 20 year period you know, to, to be in a competitively good place in every category. I love the idea, Craig, uh, of Microsoft as a, a, a decathlete and one that's going to win the competition in the long run. But what about Apple? Aren't they joining the dots very successfully? Still very narrow. I mean, you know, 
they, you know, they don't really have their own capacity day in, in the cloud scale infrastructures, uh, the, you know, which I think will be a, a, a component that will be important. You know, we think of, for example, the, the, the machine learning technologies that underlie Bing as a, a critical infrastructure in this sort of decathlon kind of environment of the future. And of course, that's very hard. I mean, you've seen the, you know, the, the, the world, you know, try to figure out how you build that scale of indexing and machine learning capability. You know, Google's invested in it, Microsoft's invested in it, and everybody else is sort of falling by the wayside. So, you know, there's a lot of pieces that have to come together over time to really have, have all of that. And I think, you know, Apple enjoyed a, a period now where they've done a fantastic job integrating a lot of uh, technology components and, and a very good job marketing and positioning them. But, but even their world is getting a lot more competitive on a global basis. And of course, we're, you know, we're resurgent a little bit in some of those areas. Is what you're really saying that we've now entered the post-PC era? It's kind of funny. The first time I was asked that question was by John Markoff in 1999 at the New York Times. And he asked Bill Gates the same thing. And both of us actually spontaneously said, no, no, you know, you, we're really just the beginning of the PC plus era. Uh, and, and by that we meant you know, that computing is going to be consumed in a large array of intelligent devices. The personal computer won't go away. It'll just become one of those elements, that, uh, albeit a very important one. And I, I think that that's you know, even more true today. Uh, you know, in 99, you know, people could say, oh, I'm not sure whether I believe that or the outlines of it. Uh, I think people today are confused simply because of you know, the number of devices that have emerged, much in the singular form that I described a minute ago, uh, that says, oh, like, maybe that PC thing won't be relevant anymore. But uh, you know, I, I thought it was interesting you know, when Jeffrey Katzenberg was talking this morning saying, wow, you know, it's those PCs and the, and the incredible capability they have that at least for the business people is going to revolutionize the way they think about things. I think we are in this period now, everybody talks about the consumerization of IT. And I think people have become so infatuated, you know, with the consumer consumption of many of these capabilities that they've lost sight of the fact that all of this stuff ultimately comes back to become a revolution in how business gets done. And that's why you really have to think comprehensively about the whole array of devices and all of the related services that are going to back them up. And it, it's that composite that creates this sort of decathlon that I, you know, kind of environment that I think is going to be interesting in the future. So maybe we can split the difference and say that we're in the post-PC PC era. <laughs> well, we're certainly in the, the era that, you know, includes that and all these other things too. Neither of them is going to go away, I think is the important thing to understand. Craig, final question. Let's, let's bring out our crystal balls. We don't have any here, but we could imagine one. In 20 years' time, what is the one thing that is going to look different, that will be profoundly foreign to us today in 2011, when it comes to technology? Well, when, when, when I think of technology these days, I think of it in very, very broad terms, not just in the traditional information technologies. I think you know, one of the things that will happen over that 20-year period is that the, the boundaries uh, between sort of the, the traditional information technologies, uh, uh, the life science technologies, and uh, I'll say the materials technologies, uh, into the nanotechnologies now, the, those things are going to become more mutually dependent. And that, you know, we may look back and say it was, it was the ability to couple you know, computing into each of these other things that ended up producing the biggest changes in people's lives, as opposed to you know just a, uh, a you know singular advance in any one of those fields. Well, Craig Mundy, the chief research and strategy officer at that decathletic company Microsoft, I want to thank you so much for appearing on TechCrunch TV, and I really hope you'll come back again very soon. Happy to do it. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you.